Um, so we're, we've been talking about motion, and we're going to continue to talk about the motion of, of point-like objects for the next couple of weeks. And last, <coughs> last time I, I pointed out Newton's first law, which just says that if you add up all the forces acting on some object, in other words, you include all of the interactions of that object with objects outside it. That would be all the forces acting on object A. Those are forces, uh, interact those forces represent interactions between object A and whatever objects surrounding it that have significant forces on it, significant interactions with it. If you add up all those forces and it turns out they all cancel each other out, then that tells you something important about the motion of object A, and that is basically that the motion of object A doesn't change. If the velocity is, is in some particular direction, it stays in that direction, and it stays the same magnitude. If the velocity is zero, it stays zero. So the sum of the forces acting on the object doesn't tell you anything about the velocity except whether the velocity happens to be changing. It doesn't tell you whether it's big, whether it's small. Forces, interactions only change the velocity. They don't, um, they don't set the velocity. So I, I, I wanted to get you to think about interactions. And so I set up two kinds of categories of forces. One, you can have an interaction between two objects if they touch each other. My hand is pushing upward on this lower block. My hand isn't touching the upper block. So my hand's not interacting with the upper block, which, which doesn't mean that my hand is irrelevant. My hand affects the motion of the lower block, and the lower block is interacting with the upper block. But, and, and this, this is all, you'll remember from, from 7a, that it's important to identify the physical system. Suppose I said my physical system was those two blocks. The two blocks together, my physical system that I want to talk about, is my hand touching that physical system of those two blocks? The answer is yes, I'm pushing up on those two blocks. I know I'm pushing up because, well, I have to work at it. And if I take that off, the whole thing gets a little easier. And the more things I put on, the more I have to push upward harder and harder. This thing has, uh, if you just look at one of these tennis balls, and you think of the forces acting on it, you should think about interactions. What contact forces are there? What object is in contact with one of those tennis balls? Well, there's only one thing in contact with one of those tennis balls. If we, if we ignore the air, and air resistance is, is negligible for what's going on here, there's only one thing that's in contact with one of those tennis balls, and that's that hoop, that metal, that metal semicircle, a piece of aluminum right there. It's the only thing in contact with it. There's a force due to that interaction. Are there any long-range forces? Yes. It's force of gravity by the Earth. The Earth acts on that one of those tennis balls. The aluminum track acts on one of those tennis balls. There's only two objects interacting with one of those tennis balls. Somehow, those two objects interacting with a tennis ball makes that tennis ball go around in a circle. There's also something tricky that, that you can probably guess. If I increase the speed here, what happens to the tennis balls? Well, they start to go up higher. I haven't changed the number of interactions. There's still only two things interacting with those tennis balls. If I slow it back down again, the tennis balls will, will drop down a bit. This tells you something about interactions. Um, it doesn't 
Newton's first law actually has nothing to say about that because the velocity of that thing is changing all the time. Something that's moving around in a circle is constantly changing its direction. Newton's first law tells you if, there no, if the net force is zero, then the velocity will be constant, so the object will move at a constant speed in a straight line. That's the natural motion of something. When it's not interacting with its surroundings, it moves at a constant speed in a straight line. That, is might, that might be moving at a constant speed right now. The, the magnitude of the velocity is constant, but the direction is changing all the time. So that's not an, an example of Newton's second law. Nevertheless, it is an example of something that interacts. So there's a contact force uh, and a long-range force both in that problem. The Earth pulls straight down. The contact force, well, we'll talk about that in a second. But, it's not, but one of those tennis balls is not moving with constant velocity because the velocity vector keeps changing direction. If it's not moving with a constant velocity, then I do not expect those two forces to add up to zero. If an object had a velocity that wasn't changing, the total force would be zero. So that's not going to be zero. That'll add up to some uh, net force. So. We, we talked about these contact forces a little bit and, and long-range forces. I think I'm just going to skip through this since I've already asked you the question. No, I'm not. I'm going to do one thing. Suppose my physical system is block B. This is a... Uh, <coughs> the problem that we, that we talked about a little bit last time. Block B is being pushed to the left by the hand. It's being pushed to the right by, the, by block A. The Earth is pulling down on it. And so the table that it's sitting on is pushing up on it. How do I know all of those things are happening? I could, uh, first of all, the, the, this tells me that blocks A and B are resting on a table. The picture, the spring is compressed to distance x. Actually, it doesn't tell me. I'll, I'll finish the description. Uh, block B is not moving and is not changing its motion. So it's not moving now, and if I look at it later, it's still not moving. So no change in motion. So Newton's first law ought to hold that the sum of the forces should be 0. The hand pushes to the left. Block A pushes to the right. How do I know how long to draw that arrow? The magnitude of the force by block A is the same as, block, as the hand because the motion isn't changing. force by A on B. Earth is pulling down F by Earth. That's a gravity force. And the table is pushing up Those are all forces acting on block B. Those are the only forces acting on block B. And so that's all that I have to say about block B. Those forces, draw them, they add up to zero simply because block B is not changing its motion. If I did the same kind of picture for one of these, which we'll do later, the vectors wouldn't add to zero. Because the motion of that thing is changing as it goes around in a circle. The velocity vector, I should say, is changing as it goes around in a circle.
Any questions about any of that? Because I want to say one more. Now I want to say something about Newton's third law. This is something that I, I hope you got out of, out of physics 7a, is that when two objects interact, they feel that interaction equally but oppositely. If I put my hand on this table in 7a, I would have said, oh, my hand is hotter than the table. Heat, one joule of heat is transferred from my hand to this table. So my hand lost one joule of heat. The table gained one joule of heat. Same amount, lost, gained instead of lost. E equal and opposite. When two, when two objects interact, the, they feel that interaction equally but oppositely. And that's all Newton's third law says. Uh, object block A is acting on block B, and so block uh, B is acting on block A. That they feel those interactions equally and oppositely. Um, you'll notice that when I draw the force diagram for block B, all of the forces say on block B. This Newton's third law says, sure, there's this force on block B. It's the negative of a force on block A. Did I draw any forces that act on block A on this force diagram? No, because those are forces that go on the force diagram for block A which I didn't draw, but I could. If I drew that, then you would see both of these. Right now, you only see the one force by A on B points to the right. If I drew the force diagram for block B, there would be a force by B on A pointing to the left. Newton's third law tells you about forces that act on two different objects. So. I'd like you to think about this one. Talk about it all you want. Let me know what you think. I'm asking for A for true, B for false. A box rests on the floor. The upward force exerted by the floor, the fl surface of the floor on the box, forms a Newton's third law pair with the force exerted downward on the box by the Earth's gravity. That's a statement you tell me whether that's a true statement or a false statement. It's a statement about what Newton's third law means. 